Well, today I'm here with Mike Valley. Is that how you pronounce the name? Uh, Valley. Or Valley. Valle for Spanish. Uh, okay. I'm, um, he's actually with Tribunal Productions, and he's working on a new product um, called Valor. So, Mike, tell me a little bit. No, this is right here. Tell me a little bit about it. It's a medieval fantasy story, really. Uh, let's see. The main story is based around this main character here. His name is Griffin Kane. Okay. Basically, what he's doing is he's trying to. His father, the king before him, was the most powerful knight in their realm. He was trusted to be the protector of his father, the king. But somewhere along the line, he was consumed by evil. Rather than being a protector, he ended up assaulting the Imperial Kingdom and killing the original king. Now, he only, the only thing he knows about his father is the hero that he really was at one point. So, he's trying to rank up as a knight himself to be what he thinks his father used to be. Now, King Edward II knows exactly who his father was, exactly what his father did. They don't repeat the story, but they're trying to stop him. So it's kind of like your your sins of the father are like passed down or visit upon the, the son type of thing, right? Absolutely. Uh, let me ask you this: what, what? How do you come up with the motivation for the for the original concept? Come up with what? How do you come up with the motivation for the original concept of the book? Well, uh, I was uh, always well, the first thing that I knew I wanted to do when I started comics was it just seemed to me and my friend uh, Al Sutherland, he's the writer, he's not here today. Uh, when we started talking, we were mainly thinking how in comics right now, the superhero thing, not only has it been done to death, it just seems like the big guys, Marvel and DC, they're doing it so well right now that you really can't come up with another original concept because chances are it's already been done. Yeah. So we figured rather than superheroes, let's just focus on storytelling. It doesn't matter the genre. We can go medieval fantasy, science fiction fantasy, or even horror. It just seemed the first one that inspired us was medieval fantasy. A lot like, uh, it was when Warcraft, the lore, before the video game, got really big. Yeah. And also the, uh, the Lord of the Rings movies and the novels really inspired us and motivated us to see what we could do about making a good fantasy genre be successful in comics. And it seems like right now the only one that really took off, but then just stopped, was uh, Joe Madge Battle Chasers. Oh yeah, I remember that. Um, I remember that from the 90s, yeah. and that was just like one of the awesome, one, you know, a very awesome book. I know he went to more like video development and stuff like that, video game development, so you know, you can't really blame him, he wanted to try a different avenue, but I yeah, thought it was like an excellent book, you know, I mean, that thing was like big, you know, it back in the 90s. It was a monster when it took off. Uh, I was a senior in high school when I read, when I read the first this, issue, and it was amazing, and I, I followed it as close as I could, and then all of a sudden, he released issue 8. He released an announcement saying this is the last one. But the story's not even done. done. The story was nowhere near being done. But you know, that's that's how it is. You know, sometimes that's why I always tell like a lot of independent artists, one of the major downfalls is or drawbacks is that staying consistent. You have to always like really work on staying consistent and so how do you yourself stay consistent with this work? I'm pretty sure you do other things. You know, how do you stay consistent? Uh, it's mainly my passion. I mean I, I look for other stuff to like kind of like exercising, you want to keep yourself in tune, you know, and it's that whole use it or lose it, so if you, you just keep yourself open to other things, the more projects come in, the more uh, the more steady that you keep going, it helps you to keep consistent in your own talent. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Now, um, any, as far as marketing, I always ask like a community question, where do you feel like, let's say for instance, comic books are going now as far as digital, print, mm -hmm. what's your idea about that? Uh, I kind of like the digital thing, it's, it's the future, I mean, it, it's accessible to everybody, and the best part is that as far as distribution, when it comes to digital, you don't have to like fill an entire warehouse and hope that you get rid of all your copies. If it's digital, you simply point people in the direction where they can find it, give them a little preview and tell them, here's where you can download it. I mean, it's. It's a great way as far as marketing to get yourself out there. The more people like your work and the more they want to follow it, the more successful you would be if you went into print. All right, any, any other advice you can give to like aspiring artists? Because evidently you're doing what you need to do to get your, your dreams out there. Any additional like advice you can give? Uh, just uh, 
um, be prepared to get a lot of negative comments, you know, because especially like whether it's your published product or whether it's your portfolio. Be expected that, I mean, oh, it's always good to have confidence in your work. Know what you are worth, but be expected to take the hits. Yeah. So you're going to get a lot of critiques and stuff. Don't let it discourage you. There is an audience out there yeah. somewhere for your stuff. If this is what you want to do and you love it, you'll make it. Thank you very much for your advice. Once again, this is Ron Caroni with Comic Privy. Just interviewing here, Mike Ballier from Tribunal Productions. I wish you guys a lot of success in your comic books as well as any other productions you may be doing in the future, okay? Thanks a lot. Thank you.